have made it back up to Island Pond again. Huge shout out to Ryan and Renee for letting us use your camp for the weekend or a day or two. I'm not really too sure yet, but thank you again for letting us come on up here and use this. It's about 3.30ish, I think. We're going to go ahead and try to hit the trail and see what it's like around town. Trails on the roadsides look a little brown, as you could expect. Uh, there's what? Probably about six inches in the backyard here, but this is kind of just secluded by trees and stuff. So we'll see what it's like when we get out there. 650's got the new cross country shocks on the front. Everything else is pretty much the same. We got to see how those shocks are. They're baselined, pretty much identical to these shocks from Andy. So we shall see. Andy obviously went through those, revalved them. We got the dual rates. Like I said, baselined exactly the same. So we'll be curious to see the difference between the traditional style reservoir location and the uh, mid body boys. And then this thing's got all kinds of changes. High gear linkage in the back. Uh, big fancy intake. So for my high gear linkage out back, I did not touch anything in regards to damping settings on the shocks. I just put the linkage in and that's it. Boy, it is icy. Holy sugars. All the shocks are quite stiff right now because the oil's cold. It's been in the trailer the whole way up and it is 12 degrees so i'm not going to really talk too much about shock stuff until we get it moving a lot and get things kind of cycled through but these corners are definitely icy you can hear the skis just uh, icing away Super icy, very sugary snow. It's probably not going to cool worth a damn. Oh yeah, we got the, um, I can't forget, we have the Indy Specialty Flowmaster head on this, so I'm very curious to see in these lower sugar snow conditions how we run temperature-wise compared to before. any bumps enough like there's chop in here but it's not natural snow stuff so things kind of feel the same it might feel a little bit more compliant out back i haven't even gotten a chance to really get into the power to see if the intake sounds different or not because we're just picking through this ice Yeah, the back is way better and the turbo definitely sounds cooler. Wow, that skid is impressive, dude. That high gear kit made a big difference. That's cool. Holy. <laughs> oh, those guys are some wizards, dude. That's crazy. I think I need to put a click of high back into the FTS. But I'm not positive. I'm going to keep riding it. Wow. That is some impress. Look at this thing. This stuff is nasty. Well, on our way back through, I'm going to hop off the sled through there. And like basically lay down with the camera so you guys can see what we're driving through. Yeah, okay. That high gear linkage is some wizardry. That is impressive, dude. Boy, I hope these trails get better because I want to keep riding this thing tomorrow. He's going to think I'm overheating, but I just want to tell him how incredible this thing is. The difference of that linkage is absolutely insane. Like... There's some big ones. We were flying. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's not even close to... Like, before you would know you're going through that stuff and don't get me wrong before it worked really good but now the back of that 
feels like that thing where it just soaks it up and you don't ever feel like you're getting close to driving it into something. I had one where I felt the front track shock like really lightly bottom to where I could put one more click of high in it. But I'm like, I want to keep riding it and see. Sounds good. Let's go. We're 131 degrees and there's some snow in here. It's still really sugary, but there's enough snow that uh, I think I'll be all right. Sure is icy out here, but man, that high gear kit is some incredible. <laughs> I do get a little bit more turbo flutter noise from the intake. Again, I'm not really getting it into boost, so I can't really tell if it made a big difference or not. I do like that that partial throttle RPM hang is gone. That's huge. Hello, group of folks. Yeah, so I need to put a click of high into my front track shock. And I might want to put a click back into the rebound on the rear on the rear shock to slow the rebound down just a whisker but again i kind of want to keep riding it till we get into better conditions that smoothness like the partial throttle smoothness without it trying to light right away is actually really nice So you can hear the turbo flutter a little bit more. And we're gonna go back this way, doo -doo -doo -doo, and down instead of going back the way we came. Can't be much worse. Well, I say that, it certainly could be worse. Either way, you know, snow conditions aren't great. It's getting better, but we're out testing, we're out riding. I always have to try and remember that. Oh, I know where we are now. And it might actually get really good. Whoa, baby. Boy, that rear skid is so good now. Getting a little thin again right here. <laughs> a little bit or something? Oh boy. Big group. <laughs> Yo, yeah, that linkage is crazy, dude. Look at this thing. This stuff is nasty right here. It's like just solid 10, 12 inch chop. Wild.
So I was just talking about this with him at the intersection there. And I talked about it a little bit briefly a little ways back. Whew! With the linkage and the tune and stuff about it potentially being flatter now because it's not lighting immediately and transferring. And it's kind of given me a little bit, not a lot, thankfully, but a little bit of like a Gen 5 or an R Motion X Skidoo type feel where it doesn't tip and rock around. It doesn't transfer a ton unless you really want it to. The Air Motion X doesn't really transfer if you want it to regardless, but this now, like you can ride it very calm and docile and it stays level and planted a lot more. And I don't know if that is from the linkage or from the tune being so much smoother and not really lighting immediately. That said, that's kind of the downside, right, of making so many changes at once is that I can't pinpoint, oh yeah, okay, the linkage made it a little bit more calm or no, it's the tune made it a little bit more calm, you know? It's, I can't say which one did what. I think the culmination of the two, like it'll still do that, right? You can still blip it and pull the skis up. But it's not like it was where it was just like instantly wheeling all the time, which I like. It makes it handle so much better. I think... <laughs> yeah, we are cranking through that. That's crazy. Um, Dude, this is wild. Woo! Yay! Uh, we've had an incident on that corner before. Not us. Another fellow in our group has tumbled someone else's sled right there on that corner going the other direction. Anyway. Oh, look at that little sun jobber. All in all, it's just, it's exactly what I wanted it to be where it it handles a lot better at high speed. It's a little bit more calm and docile and like predictable. Just all in all, amazing. So I've seen it flash DET once. I have, let's see, what did I fill up with last? I almost think it's been 91 with Boostane. And this tune is for 93, so I don't believe it's the tune's fault. Uh, I put a light splash of boost stain in before we left the shop. And then I forgot that the Irving up here is only 91 and not 93. I normally fill up at home with 93 before we leave. That's on me. I'm going to knock it down next time I get a chance to stop to the 190 tune. And we'll go from there. It's hard to really hold it because it's kind of getting grayscale out and I can't tell the definition incredibly well and I don't know where there's going to be a big hole. So here's where I'm expecting it's going to get really bad. We're going to cross this little road again up here and it's usually not great. I'm assuming it's going to be even worse right now, but time will tell. Yep, so it's going to be this for a while, I think, which is not good. So my big thing about that linkage was the, the big mogul stuff, you know, really like preventing it from bottoming super hard, but it did amazing in the stutters too. Like that stuff right there, you don't feel in the skid at all. I don't know if you can see it. That's just like, you know, your usual two inch ish, two, three inch choppy stuff. That's like three or four inches apart, just stutter bumps. It's literally what everyone would refer to as stutter bumps. They're just gone. Oh boy. This high gear linkage is uh, simply incredible. I think this night footage gives you a little bit better terrain definition. You can see like, like the peaks of the bumps and whatnot. I think our other route out of town is a little bit better. Wicked headwind. 
Yikes, yeah, I'm gonna be hot by the other end of this. I'm gonna try to do some steering to kick some snow up. But I don't know if it's gonna work. Just topped off with fuel again. Now we're headed back to camp. That way we don't have to do it in the morning. We don't have to come back across this stuff in the morning and get uh, this old girl all warmed up again. We we'll swap the snow flaps in the morning. Hopefully the extension on the 650 flap helps keep this thing a little bit cooler. We were talking about it one of the times when we stopped to let it cool down. We're wondering if the approach angle of the assault, because everyone I talked to says that their assault runs a little bit warmer than their VR1. And the only real difference I can think of, especially with a longer tunnel and cooler, is possibly, my father brought this up, this wasn't my idea, I can't take credit for it, possibly the approach angle is the major difference here, where on your VR1, your approach angle up to your upper idlers is a lot steeper, and it probably throws that snow up against the cooler a lot more than the assaults, where they kind of have that conveyor belt look to them at ride height. It's potentially just kind of throwing the snow forward and only really hitting the front cooler and not getting up on the top and the back of the cooler that much. And that makes a lot of sense to me. Whether or not that is actually what's happening, I don't know, but it does make sense. So I thought I would share that with everyone and see what everyone else's thoughts are and maybe someone else can agree with that or disagree or prove why that's not it or prove why that is it. I don't know. thought I would point it out or mention it. Where am I going to park this hog? Probably right here. Sunday morning, I'm trying to swap some snow flaps. It's like 9 o'clock. We waited a while. Uh, it was negative 2 when we got up. Not for me. Yeah, it's about eight degrees now, allegedly, according to the thermostat inside. Gotta yank the extended flap off the 650, put it onto the boost, and hopefully that helps with some of the cooling stuff riding around in this sugary snow. Got my little tool tray over there. Gonna get after it a little bit. Get warming up. On to number two. Oh no! <laughs> oh! Woo! Barely. The whole battery's getting a little weak on this one. Yeah. Shock. Yeah. <laughs> Ready? Yep. All right, I'm not gonna film too much until we get to the better snow, because you saw yesterday riding through this stuff. There's no point to show you all this mediocre stuff again until we get up to the better stuff, you know? I do wanna pop back in real quick. We're still on like the thinner stuff, but they did groom it. It has made a little bit of a difference, but I really want to just come on and point out that uh, my flap extension is working and helping. So we passed the spot yesterday where I had to stop and let it cool off because it was getting to 150s and we're still at 124. So the flap extension is working. I'm going to make up a second one and put the one back on the 650 and both of them will have the little uh, Lexan extension thing. We got a little groomer action. Check that out. Thank you to these guys for getting after it. Doing what they can with what we got. We made it up in elevation a bit to the better stuff. I'm gonna see how it goes. We're headed towards April's Maple, kinda. 
Not sure if we'll be able to make it or not, but we're headed that direction. You can't hurt it, it's in the sport mode, so 190. First little bit on the 650 with the new front shocks on it. Make sure the old bird man's back there, yep. He's saying the fronts are stiff and stuff. Yeah, they need a little bit of work. what he is talking about. I don't think they're stiff. They're rolling a little bit more than I would like them to. <laughs> what the fuck was that? That's cr the, the sound that just came out of that boost from behind me was insane. You can really hear that intake behind you. Holy pecker. That was weird, dude. <laughs> That's cool. So these fronts are rolling a little bit. I'm going to put a couple clicks of low speed in them. The high feels pretty good. I might want to put a little more rebound in, but this stuff is hard to tell right now. We're like, you know, downhill off camber. The snow is kind of goofy. I think they feel really good, though, on the compression. I do need to inform everybody, this will be the last ride for the 650cc engine in this sled. I know the comments were uh, a lot more biased towards keeping the 650 than I expected them to be. Unfortunately, I had gotten sick before I'd gotten that video up, and I'd made a deal before I was able to you know, go through the comments. I think everyone's still going to be pumped. I can tell you it is not a 9R. But I have a crate and I have an engine sitting in the shop from Indy Specialty that arrived on Saturday, yesterday, about 15 minutes after we left to come up here. So I'm super excited to get that thing in this week, as long as the rest of the other stuff shows up, to finish putting that together. I'll be in good shape to get that in and then hopefully go up to Canada and try it out. What's up? What? It's awesome. What do you mean it's awesome? It's awesome. All right, a couple shock changes and we're back on the trail here. So let's see what we got. I added one click to the low speed compression and I pulled one click out of the rebound. So I'm hoping that it does not roll over as much. Oh yeah. And then the rebound helps fight it got to be careful that it didn't make it too tippy now because it won't set in enough right so just one click each direction seems like it might be a little bit much I might want to take the compression one back out of it but we shall see in a little bit here hard to tell again the snow is not ideal oh. because it's kind of loose and then some of it is hard frozen stuff that they groomed up and then there's ice underneath and it's just very inconsistent snows
looks awesome. I don't know what he's talking about. I mean, granted, I made those two little changes there. But these things are some impressive. They feel more linear through their stroke than the velocities do, which makes sense with the reservoir mounted on the end of the body and not in the middle of it. This thing is awesome. Uh, these fronts are really nice, man. They, uh, again, I just, I keep feeling that they're very linear. What you think? This thing is awesome. I love it. <laughs> You can tell on those when you start to get into the middle chop stuff, you know, the 15 inch or like that kind of stuff. You can feel that those go from compliant to stiffer. This feels like it just has the same rate all the way through. Yeah. And they're the exact same spring rates. They are the exact same travel after the preload is added in before the crossover happens to the main spring. So I know it's not spring. It is, I don't know what Andy did for valving differences. Obviously there's gotta be something because the reservoir is in different locations, but these just feel way more linear than those do. Those work incredibly well, but when we really get down to it, I think these are more linear throughout everything. I haven't seen that thing pull up with the intake on it. That's pretty cool. It's wild what uh, five miles will do for your snow conditions. Or lack thereof, rather. I'm gonna kill the camera until we get back to camp. The rest of the next like 10 miles is pretty much this garbage. We'll pick it back up when we get there and I start this uh, clutch spring change. <laughs> 